My name is Georgianne Chapin. I'm the head of an organization called Intact America, www.intactamerica.org. We've called this press conference today to announce an American human rights campaign, a campaign whose purpose is to shed light on an American cultural practice that is both very common and very strange. I'm talking about infant circumcision, the surgical removal of healthy tissue, the normal foreskin from a newborn baby boy. This practice takes place more than a million times each year in the United States, more than 3,000 times each day. The babies we subject to this procedure are not sick. They have normal bodies and normal genitals. The American Academy of Pediatrics and the American Medical Association do not recommend routine infant circumcision on medical grounds. Yet, motivated by tradition and by misplaced concern about sex and hygiene, and bolstered by misinformation and misconceptions, we persist in carrying out this painful surgery on newborn babies without their consent. As often as not, no analgesic at all is used. When it is, the methods are inadequate to block the exquisite pain receptors in the baby's foreskin during the operation, and certainly do nothing to alleviate discomfort over the two weeks it takes for the wound to heal. Circumcision surgery places babies at risk for both minor and serious medical complications and deprives them of a healthy, functional body part for the rest of their lives. A lot of Americans don't give much thought to circumcision. They've never seen one perform because it happens behind closed doors. And many have never even seen a man or a child with an intact penis. It may come as a surprise then to know that throughout most of the modern world, routine infant circumcision is virtually unheard of. Pediatricians and obstetricians and family doctors and nurses I've met from Europe, Asia, Latin America, and the Caribbean are often shocked when they come to the United States and see that we consider it normal to subject newborn baby boys to brutal, medically unnecessary surgery. However, awareness is growing among Americans too. Many nurses, doctors, human rights lawyers, medical ethicists, parents, and others have mobilized over recent years, volunteering their time and their money to educate others about circumcision and bring an end to the practice. Due to their efforts, infant circumcision rates in this country have fallen from over 90% in the 1970s to under 60% today. Recent hype about putative benefits of circumcision, though, has caused some people to call for medical organizations, including the Centers for Disease Control and the American Academy of Pediatrics, to re-examine their long-held position that circumcision is not medically necessary. It is these calls for promotion of this unnecessary and painful violation of baby's fundamental rights that have, <clears throat> that have brought us together today to announce the launch of www.intactamerica.org, a website and an organization that will permanently change the way Americans think about circumcision. In just a moment, you'll hear from a number of speakers. Two of them are doctors who know the medical facts about circumcision, who know the risks, and who refuse to perform this unnecessary surgery on the babies who are their patients. You will also hear from a father who, after taking the trouble to investigate the facts about circumcision, decided not to subject his newborn son to it, and as a consequence was harassed and pursued by physicians invested, both literally and figuratively, in perpetuating the custom. This man, this father, was so appalled that he decided <coughs> to invest a considerable amount of his personal resources in the movement to end circumcision and in the founding of Intact America. Finally, you will hear from a woman who herself was a victim of genital modification inflicted upon her when she was a young girl in her native Somalia. She has spent many years writing and speaking out about, <clears throat> writing and speaking out about genital cutting and has dedicated her life to making sure that what happened to her will not happen to other children, girls or boys. As you listen to these speakers, we hope you will ask yourself why the United States, a country that cares about our children and that cares about human rights and that protects our daughters, allows infant circumcision to continue. We hope that this campaign being launched today at www.intactamerica.org will help you and others to change the way that our country thinks about circumcision.